And so, have they correctly represented the research that they've cited for the inclusion of this ingredient? Not in my interpretation. Don't be ridiculous. There is a niche within the fitness industry of hardcore fitness supplements. And so to be very clear, these are legal, over-the-counter fitness supplements that you may buy in stores. What is a hardcore supplement? Who are the influencers peddling them? Are they any good? These are the questions we will cover. And so this company itself categorizes their supplements as hardcore. So it's not just me being creative with the name. And their target market is clearly explained as bodybuilders, fitness athletes, sports people, but also the fitness enthusiast. So basically everyone. And the sponsored athletes are all enhanced. And it's not just hardcore. This company has the most hardcore supplements ever made in a lab. If that's not an invitation for a review, I don't know what is. Sponsored athletes. Yumon has been eating his supplements. Dennis Battaglia, bodybuilder, agreed. But perhaps the most famous fitness influencer repping this category of hardcore supplements, Bakhar Nabieva, Viper fat burning supplements. Bees don't waste their time to explain to flies that honey is better than <laughs> Favorite fly, Jeff Goldblum all day. And so I'm not a fan of fat burning supplements at all. Not even Bakhar's edgy post will change my mind on that. And so you get the idea of the marketing from these types of images. And so what I wanted to do is have a look at the hardcore pre-workout that she is selling and to see how does it differ to other pre-workouts? How does it differ to other supplements? What makes it hardcore and just to communicate it to this community for your discussion and ideas and so the first part of this video is me making fun out of fitness influencer cringe the second part of this video is very science heavy where i will be going through the label in depth and citing research and so to the hardcore fitness supplements we have a few to choose from here let's go with this one venom pre-workout and it's not just back selling venom here's a quick slideshow of other athletes pushing it into my face Contain 0% juice. That joke was too easy. Favorite Venom, Tom Hardy, no question. If you had this guy, leave now. And this post, to be clear, is important because Patricia has taken the time to show me the backside of the bottle so I can look at it from different angles, which will help with my analytical purchasing decision of the supplement. Thank you, Patricia. Caution, this profile may include potentially sensitive content. Do you still want to view it? Of course, Bakhar Nabieva, aka Miss Ironbum, was born in Baku, Azerbaijan, and now lives in Western Ukraine's. And now lives in Western Ukraine. She's famous for her strong legs. And here I was just wanting to look at the supplements she sells. Her favorite fruit is peaches, and she needs help washing her back in the shower. I need help. I can't wash my back up. Have you tried a loofah on a stick after shower? See, we got there in the end with cropped photo. And so, factually speaking, a lot of her social media is essentially X-rated pictures promoting random products such as windows, mattresses, teeth whiteners, as you do, and posting about fitness supplements with attached pictures of her glutes. Fitness products that will make working out less miserable. Is it fire? Calm down, Peter. So all the random products she sells makes me think that this isn't actually her official page. But then again, it seems to be because she's posting these personal pictures of herself. Regardless, she is sponsored by this company and these supplements are being thrown at me in all her social media. And there are other fitness influencers as well as Bakar who are part of the team. And so my takeaway from this picture, and I think this is what she was going for, is that she's standing on the toilet to take it. Time to break legs. Fear. Noise. Who did it better? Neither. It was a trick question. This influencer did. Don't you just love it when a supplement company posts videos of people dry scooping their product? And Eva with a delicious protein isolate. And now, of course, protein isolate is a completely legitimate supplement. And they also have supplements called veins, which Kumail must have been on in the previous video. And of course, thank you as always for taking your time to watch that video and to watch the videos. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you. But Kumail has clearly not been taking as much veins as this guy. And so to state, when it comes to juiced up fitness influencers, my interpretation is the over-the-counter supplements actually play a very little role relatively to the juice they take on their physiques. Of course, they may take supplements, but when I see people pushing fat burners, for example, I would say that these people take under the counter, most likely thyroid related medicines to achieve these stage physiques rather than the over the counter fat burners. And so before we look at the label, I just want to state that of course, pre-workouts are, are a valid category of supplements. They're not, for example, branched chain amino acids or tribulus, which are just complete junk and just a com complete waste of time. But of course, with pre-workouts, you don't need them. I don't take them. You can eat food. And of course, I don't think that young teenagers need to take them. People shouldn't be dry scooping them, combining with them with energy drinks, going mad over the amounts they're taking, for example. But some people may make an informed decision that they would like a pre-workout and use it sensibly. And that's fine if the pre-workout is of good quality. And so the first thing I see here is they have two different size scoops, which is interesting. So people perhaps perhaps can more accurately and efficiently take certain doses according to their needs, which could be their body mass. It could be that they're, they're quite sensitive to certain substances. Also, when I look at this, absent is the ineffective underdosed 
vitamin and mineral stack, which is a good thing. Although here they do have calcium at the bottom there, pretty pointless, but anyway. And so it's not a terrible start from this hardcore pre-workout. The hostile performance matrix, what a name, beta alanine. And so beta alanine is designed to aid performance, to be ergogenic. And it does have a fair amount of research into it, for example, related to muscular endurance, for example. And we do have meta-analysis, which shows positive outcomes in terms of it being ergogenic and aiding performance. But there are caveats to that, for example, in trained individuals, it was less effective than non-trained individuals, for example. And so when I look at beta alanine, there is evidence to support it. It's not insane, but it's not something I would say that you need necessarily in your pre-workout. In addition, and this point can get lost, you would need a consistent dose of beta alanine over time for it to be effective for those performance goals according to the evidence we have. And so if you're going to take beta alanine just a few times in a supplement, then it wouldn't be effective in those doses. Indeed, this meta-analysis only reviewed research which used long-term supplementation of beta alanine. And so technically speaking, the large dose is fine, 3.2 grams. But again, you don't need this from supplementing dairy, fish, chicken, for example. But even with a good dose here, again, you would need to use it long-term for it to be in the evidence-based effective range. But here's the thing, are you going to take this supplement long term? It has caffeine, green tea extract in it, beta alanine. Is that something that you're going to take long term, considering the potential side effects that some people get from these stimulant type pre-workouts? Again, just a question to pose out there. But then again, these pictures mean gain, so there's that. And so the smaller dose there, 1.6 grams, again, underdosed, but perhaps the reason they're doing that is because some people can feel side effects from beta alanine, such as a tingly feeling. So maybe they're underdosing the smaller scoop to allow people that flexibility, maybe, which thinking. In any case, there are noted side effects of beta alanine, such as tingles. So that's something you should be aware of. Calorie burn formula. So I wanted to know why they put this in. It's shown to increase metabolic rate and enhance calorie burning, activates brown adipose tissue and converts white adipose tissue into brown adipose tissue. And here's the technical name. Let's just call it grains of paradise. And that is the, the actual accepted translation. And it's a spice, which some people think can increase your metabolic rate and therefore have, you know, benefits for calorie burning and exercise, for example. And so have they correctly represented the research that they've cited for the inclusion of this ingredient. Not in my interpretation. So yes, if this study is taken at face value, it does show an increase in metabolic rate involving this substance. But what about deeper analysis? The metabolic increase in this piece of research was also dependent on cold therapy being used. And that's a vital factor. And indeed, it can be communicated that the grain of paradise supplement increased the effects of the cold therapy rather than in isolation, the supplement increasing your metabolic rate. And so the company claims activates brown adipose tissue. Yes, by also using cold therapy in that research. How can you leave that bit out, naughty? And so this is a major point to state. And indeed, I would not be comfortable if it was my supplement selling this ingredient in this way based on this one piece of re research. More evidence is absolutely needed. But influencers are pushing it in my face, so it must be right. And so the first matrix, let's be honest, was not that impressive. And that's the first time I've ever said that because this was glorious. The nitric oxide and nutrient delivery matrix. And so nitric oxide is used for blood flow, for example, in these supplements, the dilation of your arteries. And so the larger scoop of nitrosigine is drum roll, very well dosed. Congratulations, let's let off the fireworks. And this is an interesting ingredient because we have an independent piece of research, so it's not funded by supplement companies, that found that 1.5 grams of nitrosigine was as effective as 8 grams of 2 to 1 citrulline malate. And so you need less for the same effect. And so that would be a good thing when you're thinking about supplementation. And so this supplement has the correct dose as was used in that independent piece of research in the larger scoop. And, and another benefit of this is the form of arginine used in this is bioavailable. And we have other supplement ingredients such as glutamine, for example, for recovery, where the problem is it's not bioavailable. So that's a, a vital factor the bioavailability of the ingredients that you're ingesting. And so when we look at the nitric oxide component of the supplement and we look at the large scoop, this is a, a well done to this company. They got it right. They got it correct. I think that piece of research is highly interesting. And so this part is well formulated. And then you have to go and slap me in the face by giving me the prop blend. And so if you can't be bothered to give me transparent doses, I can't be bothered to dissect it. It ain't a dead rat. Volatile energy and focus matrix. L-tyrosine, so a standard pre-workout ingredient here to help people cope with their workouts. And so in the larger scoop, they have the minimum effective dose there. So they're literally just on the playing field. You basically just pass your driving test. And then you have caffeine. Okay, so the standard stimulants. Fine, caffeine is ergogenic. I have evidence-based videos on this. It can absolutely aid performance. But again, it's not some type of magic pill. Of course, you have to put the work in your nutrition, your training. But caffeine in a pre-workout, if you 
are okay with taking a stimulant such as caffeine, of course, is a, a decent ingredient. And they have 200 milligrams, which is this, I would say the, the industry standard dose. So I don't see anything out of place there. And so that that's fine. However, 400 milligrams, let's just say a wee bit too much. Personally, I don't take caffeine in the form of pre-workouts and, and or pills, for example. I drink coffee. Okay, methyl liberine here. I don't know anything about it. Maybe you do. If you know about this ingredient, please let me know. And then you have L-theanine. All right, calm down, calm down. That's basically why they put it in to act as a counterbalance to the stimulants. And so you see 100 milligrams here in the larger dose. And so in much research we have into L-theanine, you're actually going to see around 200 milligrams used. And so what? Are, and so I would say that they have perhaps underdosed this. Yohimbine HL, again, which is something you commonly see in fat loss supplements. And so I do understand that Yohimbine is perhaps the best of a bad bunch when it comes to fat loss ingredients. I'm not a fan of fat loss ingredients. I'm not a fan of this stuff, but I understand that this particular one has more evidence for it than others. But again, still not for me. And to end, Hoopazine A. And so this is a cognitive ingredient. The brain gains massively underdosed. And so in many supplements, you'll see 200 to 400 micrograms of this substance. The irony of underdosing a cognitive related ingredient is not lost on me. Please let me know your ideas of this hardcore supplement. I'm James Linker.